sometimes this passage was utilized during the time of the 70s, even earlier than that, in a, in a, in a kind of teaching called um, liberation theology, which was something that sort of blended Marxism with shades of Catholicism, but it, it sort of looked at this idea of there is this perpetual state of class warfare, and there is the need for those who are poor to violently overthrow the rich, because the rich, because of their richness, are inherently evil. And that's something that the church condemned, showing that even there are saints, such as St. Louis or others who were kings who were good stewards of what was entrusted to them. So it's important for us to remember when the Lord is, is talking here, he's not saying those who have substantial material blessings are therefore unequivocally uh, condemned. But what he is saying is he's saying there's this other side in which when we have and it's not always necessarily our material blessings, but it also might be our talents. It might be our capacities. Maybe we are a powerful speaker. Maybe we have an attractive personality that can just bring people, that just can win people over. And the danger is how the enemy can take something that is good and idolize it. I've been reading recently Near Christianity uh, by C.S. Lewis, and one of the things he talks about there, he talks about that the, the devil is okay sort of allowing you to have certain virtues if he can ultimately keep you chained by pride. So sometimes he might even heal other vices within you or sort of help along with that if he can sort of do it through a lens of pride and then you get stuck. Because pride is the, is the worst of all of the, the seven deadly sins. And it's the, it's the most subtle. And pride is what's being spoken of here. When we have these material blessings, when we have these abilities, it can be very easy for us to turn it on ourselves and say, look at what I am. Look at what I've done. Sometimes as Americans, we really struggle with this. The sense of, you know, I did it by my, you know, pulling up my bootstraps and just doing it all. And there's this way in which instead of being like Mary who says, all generations will call me blessed. I mean, she's saying the truth. The Almighty has done great things for me. So she's saying, yes, I have been made great, but it's because of him. And she acts as a moon, recognizing that there is no light in her except from the light that's given that shines and reflects off of her. And so the idea of it is hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven, it's this idea of when we have whatever it is, the enemy can use pride to blind us and to say, well, this is our doing, instead of being a total gift from the Lord. And that's what the Prince of Tyre falls into um, in this first reading in the book of the prophet Ezekiel. It says, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say this to the prince of Tyre. So you might wonder, well, what is this land of Tyre? We hear about Tyre and Sidon. Tyre is an island off in, the, it's in the Mediterranean, and it's off the coast of the, the Holy Land. So it's one of the Phoenician islands. You actually hear about these islands in uh, um, the story of the um, Odyssey have the Phoenicians, well, this is the same kind of group that's there, but they were amazing traders. They're, 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 it was an island, and so they had to rely on 
their marketing, their shipping, their trading, and they became amazing at that. They had profound intelligence for being able to be some of the best traders in the entire ancient world. But that intelligence that was given to them by God, they stopped giving God glory and they started looking at themselves, saying, we are the ones, and this is where this whole idea of we have the mind of a God, they started to invert it on themselves and say, I have the power. It's like, you know, that guy He-Man, you know, I have the power. I remember my mom always said, like, you can't watch He-Man because Jesus Christ is the only master of the universe. And so, you know, He-Man, yeah, he's... He's got a sword and stuff, but he says, I have the power, and he's like, no, he doesn't have the power. Um, that's sort of reflecting back, saying, I'm the one who has done this, who has made myself great. And unfortunately, when we start focusing on ourselves and realize that we have the glory instead of giving God the glory, then what happens is it's very easy then to start to discern what is good and what is evil. It's the temptation in the, of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. To have that fruit makes yourself like God, having the ability to say what is good and what is wrong. And so as these people started, this prince started to see themselves as being so powerful on their own strength, that they stopped recognizing God being the source of their blessing. And in doing that, they stopped recognizing God being the source of the moral law. And they started to, in a sense, make their own version of the moral law. And so they started to loot Israel. They started to use their intelligence to swindle the other nations, to, in a sense, plunder them through being powerful marketers. And that's what is being condemned here, is saying, you've taken what is good. You've taken the gift of intelligence and ability, and you haven't given me glory. But not only that, is you've set yourself up as a god, and you're actually hurting others through your intelligence. You're, you're in a sense, being like Lucifer, who was given such powerful, powerful gifts and abilities that he turned it all around and now uses those to attack the human race, to pull as many people down. And so whenever we, in a sense, invert our abilities through pride, pride is how the devil fell, then we, in a sense, become little Lucifers, which is something scary to think about. And the condemnation here is all this beauty, all this goodness, because you've inverted it and you're using it unwisely, now it will be thrust through. It'll be destroyed. I mean, there's this powerful image here where it says, they shall draw their swords against your beautiful wisdom. They shall run them through your splendid apparel. So just think of that. All the beauty and everything that they were saying, look at what I've done for myself. And the Lord is saying, well, someone's just going to take a sword and run it right through all that stuff that you thought was so amazing, so godlike, and it will humble you to show you that you are not God. And there are consequences for sort of vaulting ourselves up and saying, I am my own master. So that's what's being said here. So we have to really look at our own hearts and see, regardless if we have huge amounts of material possessions, or even if we don't, we all have been given gifts, abilities, things that God has entrusted to us, positions of authority, circles of influence. How are we using that? Do we always give God the glory? Do we always point it back? And this is where we need the virtue of humility to be able to say, I am nothing apart from you, Lord. You are my everything. And so all that has been given to me is not mine to cling to, but 
I use it all for your greater glory, to love you and to love my neighbor as myself. And we need to also look on a societal level as well. This is something we need to be careful of, because especially I think we struggle in this area as, um, as a country because of the comfortability maybe that we've had, maybe certain aspects in which we, we sort of have from the very beginning of our American culture, very good things, but we also have this idea of we're gonna do it on our own strength. There's sometimes a pride that comes in in which we look down on the rest of the world and we kind of focus on ourselves to say we are the center. I mean, in a certain sense, in a, in a funny way, you can see this even in the way that we deal with sports. You know, if you think of, we have the World Series, or we have the Super Bowl, which is like the ultimate, ultimate expression, and yet the rest of the world, in many ways, could care less about the World Series that maybe only has like a team from Canada, and everyone else is American. And there is this sort of weird way in which we're kind of like, we're blind to the fact that the whole rest of the world actually focuses on other things besides on what we focus on. Like the World Cup, for instance. Now that's starting to grow a little more, but if you just think of, the, this is just sort of a funny instance of how we can be blind in certain areas in which we need to actually develop a deeper humility. And maybe, maybe the Lord is allowing, again, not causing, but allowing maybe some of the experience that we're going through right now. Maybe in the midst of seeing sort of, I mean, the craziness in, in politics more and more just getting more and more polarized and stuff like that, maybe it's something that, or the coronavirus stuff, or just everything kind of shutting down, maybe there is a, in a sense, a blessing that the Lord is trying to show us to say, humble yourselves. Open your heart to really not focus on yourself, but recognize that everything you've received is a gift from me, and it can go away just like that. Maybe learn through this whole experience how to have proper humility so that we can truly live out the vocation that we were called to as a people which is ultimately to defend the truth that every single person in the womb and all the way until natural death has been given beautiful and inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what does that happiness mean? What does that freedom mean? Being humble in the sight of God will show us that. 